What's up? It's GBK Collectibles, and you know what day it is. It is Mythical Mountain Monday, and not just any other Mythical Mountain Monday, but it is the first Mythical Mountain Monday of 2021. I hope you guys are excited. We took a little bit of a week break, because they took a week break also from the auction. I also could have gone there just in general, showed off some uh, stuff from Mythical, but I figured, heck, let's take a break from, uh, we kind of took a break uh, here or there. Like, I took a break from uh, a figure review. Initially, it was going to be the Batman one. That was initially going to go up to be next, then I ultimately did the uh, top 10 uh, of uh, 2020, the figures, and uh, so this coming Friday, you'll finally get to see the Arkham Knight review, the Arkham Batman Arkham Knight review, which I'm very excited about. Uh, I really like that figure, I think it's a great figure, so uh, yeah, I would definitely suggest watching it, just don't take it my word from me, just, you know, see the video. So, as always, Mythical Mountain Monday, they had their auction. Had some really, g a lot of good stuff. So, let me show you the stack real quick. Uh, so, this is the stack that I got. Now, there's a lot, a lot of cool, like, really cool books, I think, in this stack. But before that, I wanted to show something off really cool. So, there's a specific series that I got into, and it was, I talked about, I think, last Mythical Mountain Monday or a few weeks ago, but it was uh, Department of Truth, uh, done by James Tyne V, the fifth, or the fourth, I believe the fourth, yes, I think the fourth, James Tyne the fourth, uh, or James, yeah, James Tyne the fourth, yeah, it is, uh, but, uh, then, first issue, thought it was absolutely fantastic, and I was looking for the rest of the series. I picked up the, uh, re most recent issue, which was issue four, but unfortunately I can't read into, like, issues, uh, two and three, but speaking of two, I did get, through the mail, through Macari, I did get these, uh, issue number two of the Department of Truth, which looks really, really cool. Looks like it's going to have to do with, the uh, Reagan, which is going to be very interesting. Maybe think he's the devil, just judging off the cover. And I also, nonetheless, I also got this really, really, I will put the information on it, uh, of what, actually, I do have that information. Hold on. What's up, I'm back. So, as I was saying, uh, this particular issue, this is the B cover of uh, D Department of Truth issue number two. And uh, once again, this is like, a, I've only, w once again, only one issue into the series so far. But man, is it a cool, a cool kind of conspiracy. James Titan has just been knocking out of the part. And I realized he also uh, did Constantine the Hellblazer for like in 2016 with, I think, I forget the other writer. His name is Doyle. Uh, but he, they did, they co-wrote that book, which I just found out today, and it's really, really cool. But yeah, uh, Department of Truth, uh, both the regular variant and the, uh, cover B is both really, really cool, but really well done. I'm very excited to read these when I eventually get three, uh, so I can get caught up on the story, because essentially that's, that's been a phenomenal book so far. Uh, but for the actual Mythical Mountain stuff, uh, I did get, uh, some cool stuff from both the auction, just because you saw the stack, but I also did get some other stuff. So my first thing that I got, uh, the only thing that's, like, kind of figure Funko Pop related, I got this awesome Retro Toys, uh, Optimus Prime, so it's meant to look kind of like the, uh, the classic G1 toy. But I just really like it. Uh, I like Transformers, but I don't like, it's weird, I don't like collecting Transformers. Uh, just because it's like it, that's a whole, like with any collection, anything you can collect, whether it be Godzilla, Star Wars, Predator, Alien, there's eventually a rabbit hole that you go down, and it's like, oh, Jesus, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole. Uh, so I, I think that's my extent. I did have a few uh, Transformers. I actually sold one recently, uh, an Optimus Prime from Combiner Wars, which was like a series, I think, in 2015 or 16, I believe. But yeah, this is a really, really cool pop. I'm going to definitely be taking this guy out of the, uh, the box. Or I might keep it. You never know when you're going to meet uh, Peter Cullen one day. Have him sign it. I think that would be a really, really cool pop to sign. So yeah, only pop I got. Optimus Prime. Really, really cool. Really excited to have that one. So, I did get a few comics. So, uh, as you guys know, so these are all... They're going to have a theme correlated with each other. And you, you'll clearly see that theme in a minute. Uh, so, the first one that I'll show is this awesome one. As you guys know, I love Batgirl. I love Barbara Gordon, Batgirl. She's probably one of my favorite characters. Really got me into the DC, like DC, get, got me really into DC. Uh, so, here we have issue 27 of uh, 
Batgirl from DC Universe. Uh, this is actually, I think, her first appearance of her new costume uh, that she has been rocking up until fi issue 50, but she's it's kind of weird because I think she's like both, she's Oracle slash Batgirl, so it's very, very interesting to see what's going, but I really love this costume design. At first I wasn't too sure about it, but like when I got my hands on the figure, which like, strangely enough, I think if the figure, like, oh, hold on. Uh, but yeah, I like, I don't know, you guys can't really tell, but they're, I mean, it looks really, really good. They did a really good job of sculpting this figure to look uh, like the cover, which I think is really, really cool. I really love this Batgirl design. It kind of has grown on me a little bit, comparative to, like, I love the previous one, which was the DIY suit, but this one's actually really cool because it's kind of back to basics, but actually it stands out on her own. Uh, it looks really, really cool, really solid. I actually kind of like the no, like the little cow she has. It's not really like a cow. She doesn't really have a cut cow at all. I think that's really, really cool. So, and then the next one, it is Batgirl issue 29. Also, as I said, you'll see a theme with these ones. Uh, but yeah, once again, Batgirl. Uh, not really, I, it's weird, I was starting, I was going to start to read the DC, uh, Rebirth series initially, then of course I moved, uh, then that kind of like, I didn't, uh, I didn't know any shops around here, so it was like before I knew Mythical Mountain, uh, so it was before then, so yeah, there's Batgirl right there, this is a really, really cool one, and the crosshairs of Commissioner Gordon, which is really, really interesting. It's really interesting because usually a lot of stories they don't uh, how the like, like the relationship with uh, Barbara Gordon and uh, Jim Gordon works. She usually sometimes doesn't like it can work either both ways. There's sometimes he knows she's Batgirl, and there's times that he doesn't. I think within this uh, point in time because they've had many conflicts. I think throughout different books. He doesn't know that this is uh, Barbara, but like once again, uh, as he said, there'll be a noticeable theme, and you'll find out that theme is Sean Murphy. As I got issue both issue uh, five and six of uh, the, the White Knight, Batman White Knight, which is Sean Murphy's own little universe that he did, I have the first issue actually of this series, so and I actually think I'm gonna start to collect this series. It's gonna be probably hard, because these are kinda hard to, the issue, like, floppies are hard to come by of these. But yeah, you get a really, really cool, like, really cool looking, like, front cover, like, it looks like a crime, kinda like a crime, uh, poster from a 60s movie, which looks really, really cool. And then this one, you got, uh, Batgirl and Nightwing. I really love Bat, uh, uh, Barbara's outfit, cause it's kind of like a mixture between like a lot of the suits. It has elements of that suit, it has elements of the Burnside suit, and uh, like kind of has like a tactical kind of look, like the normal Batwoman costume. I actually think it's a the better example of it. It's like a good amalgamation between the Burnside costume and her uh, DC Universe costume. I'm, I, I'm gonna guess that's what I'm gonna call it, it's a DC Universe costume. But yeah, that looks really really cool. Uh, yeah, really, really cool. I'm actually really excited to collect all this series because I've heard mixed things, but ultimately I've heard mixed to good things about this series, so I'm very excited to collect this series. And I love Sean Murphy's art. It's a really, really cool, kind of unique style of art uh, that he does. And the next uh, one, uh, this is actually based the sequel series, Curse of the White Knight, uh, and this is uh, book five with Batgirl, and once again, looks awesome. Like, I really love the look. I love the uh kind of, it's like a really cool kind of neo noir a neo noir style to it like a crime kind of like a crime comic book you would see back in the day which i really really like but yeah so that is for pretty much all the stuff that i picked up in the store itself uh for the next so this all this stuff is gonna be uh auction pickup stuff which i'm very excited about so first things first so death metal is a thing that's going on right now and I know eventually at some point I'm going to read Death Metal. Uh, I still need to read Dark Knight's Metal, strangely enough. Uh, and maybe the Batman Who Laughs series. But I did pick up some really, really cool uh, Death Metal related books. These are pretty much all Death Metal related books. And we have Dark Knight's Death Metal, The Robin King, which who he, he is, along with the Batman Who Laughs, is one of the main antagonists of the book. Uh, this is his, I think, first appearance or his first solo book which is really, really cool. Really, really cool, unique art. As I said, it was done by the guy who, uh, the art, I, the cover is done by the same guy who did uh, 
the art for Constantine the Hellblazer, which was a series that came out in 2016. Uh, I think it was like the DC Direct. I can't remember what the hell it was called at that point. But really, really cool art. Really, really cool and unique. There's actually a story, I think, within Detective Comics that deals with Dead Man uh, with this art style. And it's really, really, like a really, really cool issue. Uh, well, a really cool, like, story within that issue. But yeah, looks really, really cool. Uh, and I'm pretty sure there's a McFar there is a McFarlane figure of the uh, the Robin King coming out. I don't know if he used to build a figure, but they do have the Death, the Dark Knights metal, Death metal figures coming out. Next one is the Multiverse Who Laughs. So I have no idea what this one is about, but it has the Batman who laughs, and he's kind of like calculating all these freaking. Uh, oh my God! Wait a minute. They're like. Oh, oh no. I think these are like from that like amount because let me see. Oh. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. It, it may be set like in a multiverse of where like the animals or something. It just looks really kind of, it's a weird kind of look uh, style art. But it is pretty cool though, I have to say. I have to say. It has a really, it reminds me of James Stokes art a little bit. Or I can't remember the writer. Uh, I will put his name, uh, who works with Grant Morrison a lot on his stuff, like on All-Star Superman and stuff. I know it's not that, I, I don't think that's that same artist, but it looks really kind of like a very similar style to that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. I am eventually going to read these. I'm probably not going to read them now because I don't, I would not, I wouldn't know what the hell is going on within these books as a death metal. And I think I need to read Dark Knight's Metal. This one's pretty cool. It is Dark, uh, Dark Knight's uh, Death Metal, Legends of the Dark Knight. And it's all these different, like, Dark Knights, including the frickin' Bat, uh, Bat Rex, uh, where I think he just downloads his subconscious to this T-Rex, and it's really, really cool, really ridiculous. Like, you just, it's just ridiculous. And he got the Batman who laughs. It looks really, really cool. I have no idea who that is. I, that, some version of Bruce Wayne, I'm not sure. But, yeah. Really, really cool, unique, uh, different kind of... S oh, wait, is that a Green Lantern? Wait, no, that can't be. I don't know who who a lot of these characters are. I know the the Batman one, the Batman, one, uh, the Batman uh, Rex one, because that one's just... It, it just stands out to me. Uh, and, yeah, it looks really, really cool. As, hold on, the camera's about to cut out of me, so I will be right back. Oh, I'm back. Uh, so next, the, the last Dark Knight, Death death metal is the last stories of the dc multi the dc universe so this is cool it's a thick book too like this is like like a kind of small trade if you want to think about it so it's going to be interesting i don't know what this is about but i think it goes through all the different versions of the teen titans throughout the the dark multiverse which will be pretty interesting to see like you got like you got deanna troy or Donna Troy, yeah, Donna Troy, Nightwing, Cyborg, Wally West, Flash, uh, Starfire, Raven, Changeling, or Beast Boy, uh, which is really, really cool. So it's, it's really, really cool, wonderful art. But apparently, this is a really, really cool story. So I'm going to be interested in reading it eventually when I get around to it, as I said. So that was all of the Dark Knight's uh, death metal. Once again, the I think the event is still continuing on right now. And uh, actually, I think future uh, next month or this month technically is when a lot of the f future state stuff starts to happen, and that's going to be pretty fun, I think. Uh, but for the next uh, one, we got Batman ninety nine, and this is actually really cool. Uh, I actually have a few of these. I have the Punchline one for the Punchline one shot, and I have uh, the Batgirl one for I think one of four or something, one of four, one of three. I can't exactly remember, but these the cool designer style of uh, of the characters throughout the series. So this is Nightwing. He, this is kind of like the first Batman book. This is the one. It's a one for twenty five variant, uh, which I think all pretty much all these designer variants are that are they the one for twenty five cover, and they're really really cool. Dick Grayson, I really like. I really love uh, Robin. Uh, well, his, this specific. Well, he's not Robin. I love Nightwing. I should say properly but he's a really really cool solid character and i'm actually tempted to start to read nightwing because of tom taylor's run because it's going to involve barbara gordon which i love those two together that's my opinion but yeah it, it really really solid looking i really love these covers these are really really beautiful and well done uh designer wise and also like cool if you want to like 
cosplay this specific version of Nightwing. I think that's really, really cool uh, to do. And, and also, it's just like cool character studies because I really love that. So, next one. This one is super cool. I'm very happy to have this. As I was saying, with the, like, real, this kind of started all really, like, me wanting to read Dark Knight's Metal because of that Bat the Batman toy that I got. But, as I was saying, like, I have had a few uh, varying issues of Batman uh, Dark Knight's Metal. But I do have the, I think, the proper issue number one now. And I'm super excited about it because, look, at that, that cover is just so cool. You did get the different uh, dark versions of the Batmans. Like, I think there's the... Hmm, let me see. Let me try to name them all. So there's the Merciless Batman because it's the Wonder Woman logo. Uh, there's the Red Death. There's uh, Dawnbreaker. The Drowned, and I, the Murder Machine, and I, oh god, was there another one? I think this is the, the Batman who laughs, but I could be wrong. There may be another one that I'm completely forgetting, but uh, those are all the Batmans that I'm aware of. Oh, no, 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 I think that's, De that, never mind, I, that's Devastator, that's Devastator Batman. As I was about to say, that that's, that's Doomsday Batman, which is really, really cool. Once again, very excited to get into the series when I eventually do. I need to get around to it because I have so many, like, backlog. It's not even funny. But, yeah, this is really, really cool. I'm really glad to have that in the collection. So, the, these next, uh, this one, this next one is a complete set, and I am super hyped to have this. Uh, so, back in the 90s, uh, before, of course, before DC, uh, not DC, uh, God, what was it? Uh, Star Wars was owned by Disney. Uh, they, for, I, th I don't know what the, the reason was, but during the 90s, it was, I think, roughly after, like, right after the, the Thrawn trilogy kicked off, which kind of, like, kind of kicked off the new, exp this kind of new uh, expanded universe and new kind of Star Wars content, uh, there were, these, uh, Lucasfilm decided to do a multi kind of, uh, multimedia event, which is really cool, with the exception of a movie, which th this would be cool if it was a movie. Uh, and, of course, that was Shadows of the Empire. So this is one through six of Shadows of the Empire. I never played the game. It's also to note that this is the first appearance of Dash Rendar, who is the playable character within the video game. Uh, but, yeah, once again, as I said, it was a multimedia event. Uh, even uh, Comic Cop has talked about it. Uh, it was consisted of toys, this comic book, the, I think, books, uh, and... Uh, of the comic, the video game, which was really, really cool, and it's something to do, like, that's something you don't kind of really see anymore, uh, but it's really cool. This is essentially took and takes place right after, uh, Return of the Jet, uh, right after Empire, really directly right after Empire Strikes Back, so you get to see Luke kind of construct his lightsaber, uh, you kind of get to see, like, what he goes through and what they are. Uh, there's also Prince Sh uh, Shizor, I believe, and his species is in the canon, but he has not made it a canon. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, the, it's kind of interesting of where they're going with the story right now for the, dark, the Star Wars comic, because it's still a lot more focused, rebel-like kind of empire focus. so it is going to be interesting to see what they continuously do with that series. But so far, like, Star Wars has been really solid, but yeah, good really really cool and the thing I love too is the art is absolute like the cover art itself is absolutely fantastic for these like, then you got Boba Fett fighting like four loms and uh, Bosk yeah Bosk which is really really cool and this is really cool because they could take possibly take ideas from uh, from this uh, this story and put it into like maybe the Mandalorian or even the uh, Rangers of the New Republic, which I think would be really, really cool because these are really, really cool. Then you got Leia's Bosch and uh, I think, I forget, like, it's not Black uh, Kartanzik, who is the newer Wookiee bounty hunter, but one of the original, the OG. Uh, that's just, that's just uh, Chewie disguised as a bounty hunter. This one's probably my favorite. I really love this cover. Like, I love, uh, I just really love the, like, the cover art of the Shadow of the Empire. Like, I was debating whether to pick this series up for the longest time, but man, it looks so cool. And this one, too. Once again, these all look really, really cool just because they, they just look like a Star Wars poster, especially, like, they give me, like, heavy, heavy, uh, Attack of the, like, Attack of the Clones in terms of art style and palette. 
which is really, really cool. And I really love that about this series. It's really, really cool. So with that out of the way, that is the big comic book. So now it's just a lot of kind of smaller stuff. So we have Deadpool number six. Uh, and it's the Aliens variant, the Merc, Deadpool, the Merc with the Mouth, in space, no one can hear you cuss, which is true, which is really, really cool, a really cool Alien homage cover, I love that, it's really cool, I usually don't go for these kind of covers, I don't collect Deadpool a lot, uh, I do like the character, I just don't really collect them, but that cover I made the exception. Uh, this one's really, really cool, it is the Mighty Thor, this is Jason on um, Jason Aaron's run. And it's just really, really a beautiful looking cover. Like, that, that's the main reason I got this was not necessarily to say that I don't care about Thor. It's just, man, it's just really, really cool. I wish I would, was reading this series at the time. Because, man, that book, spec, like, th that, that, like, number one of Jane Foster being Thor is going to go right up when that movie comes out. When uh, Love and Thunder, I believe, it comes out. Yeah, this next one's cool. So uh, it is a older comic. It's actually X Men. It's Enter the Star Jammers, who is uh, the leader is uh, Cyclops and uh, Havoc, and I think oh god, I forget the third the the third brother summer brother, but like I think it was Vulcan. Vulcan, yeah, Vulcan. Was, uh, but this is really cool. They actually showed up within the first few issues of the newest X Men series by Hickman. And they actually showed up. They were a big prominent uh, part of the uh, New Mutants first arc of uh, the, house, the House of... I'm going to guess I'm going to call it the House of X era of, uh, of uh, uh, X-Men. But really, really cool. Just really cool. I love having kind of like these older kind of comics just to have them. Just because they're really, really cool. I usually wasn't always like kind of big into collecting the older kind of comics. But man, I, I love collecting the older ones. This one's pretty cool. So this was a, uh, a, Mar uh, a Mary, this is a Mary Jane variant of Punisher 013, and it is a uh, homage cover to the Amazing Spider-Man cover, of first appearance of uh, the Punisher, and she's got Mephisto in her uh, crosshairs, which I don't blame her because that was one more day was terrible. I haven't even read it, and I know it's dumb and stupid, uh, but. Yeah, I mean, it's really, really cool. I really love the Mary Jane variants. It's really, really cool and just really fun. And But yeah, I also love how it has the Marvel uh, Mar the Mar Marvel Comics group. I think that's always the coolest part. Uh, so, the camera's about to cut out on me again, so I will be right back, guys. <laughs> comic book i think it is uh marvel comics groups the tomb of dracula lord of vampire cross of fire cross of fear and it is issue 60 nice which is really really cool i actually don't really call like it's weird i'm actually probably gonna start oh god it's just a rabbit hole after a rabbit hole but i really love the marvel comics like when they dealt like the horror kind of stuff that they did where it's like essentially of what you could say uh I, I mean, EC light, I guess you could say, but it is really, really cool because you got you got Dracula, you got vampires. It's really, really cool. But yeah, I just love the older kind of like, and I love how Dracula is his own character within the Marvel universe, which is just so funny to me. I think it's just so ridiculous how like this age-old character it's like oh yeah he's just he could be in any continuity i don't think dc dc actually may have because i know vampirella's continuity does have a actual dracula in it so which is funny so last one and i think the piece the resistance to the video in my opinion is this is just really cool and i'm really excited to have this uh, once again this is a really really great story it is Batman number one from the New 52, the Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, uh, like the beginning of the the run. And man, it is so cool to see this. And it's also got the cool DC logo. I love this logo. Uh, this is a logo that I loved uh, before they got with that kind of like stylized one. But this is the beginning of the New 52 run, aka the beginning of the Court of Owls storyline, 
which is really, really good. And also, it's kind of amazing, Skyder has continuously, uh, this was, I think, this group, uh, Snyder and Capullo, were ultimately the, uh, this creative team throughout the whole New 52. A lot of the, uh, while a lot, they started with 52 books, a lot of got canceled, a lot of them changed creators, you know, like Suicide Squad was one of them, they changed so much, but this was series was a stand, uh, like, the team just stayed on. And they were pretty consistent, too. It's not like they had to have backup issues or anything, which was really, really cool. This, the beginning of this issue is really, really cool, though. It's actually just Batman fighting in Arkham Asylum. Uh, then, ultimately, the Joker helps him, which you learn to find out. It's just Dick Grayson, which is a really, really cool way to start off the, uh, the new 52 run for this character. I also love Capullo's drawing in art in general in this book. is absolutely amazing. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, there's not really much else you could say about Gre uh, Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's run that I think I've already said before. It's just probably one of the definitive Batman runs for a lot of people. I know there's a lot of people who don't like it. Uh, I mean, there's a th that, that's the thing. Each story arc has their hit or miss. Like, you know, it's good, it's bad. I actually kind of enjoyed, uh, while well, I never really finished it all, I actually really enjoyed uh, super, the beginning of Super Heavy, which it was uh, Jim Gordon as Batman. I thought it was really, really cool. Because you think, yeah, why not? I mean, everybody else has pretty much been Batman except for Jim Gordon. So, and that that was it was actually pretty like a pretty fun run. So, yeah. With that being said, that is Mythical Mountain Monday of 2021, the first one of 2021, I should say. Uh, so, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed everything, and we uh, are going to continue popping out videos like this. Uh, you'll get to see a lot of cool reviews. As I said, there's a lot of figures that I never really got. I didn't get to to 2021. I have a whole back that I just need to fill, uh, and, and maybe a lot that you see in uh, the, the back here. Uh, I don't, I don't know what though. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you guys like the video, uh, hit like and hit subscribe so you can get notified when we upload videos like Mythical Mountain Mondays. We upload uh, What's in the Box Wednesday uh, and uh, figure reviews. So uh, as you know, the previous two, uh, uh, well, the, the figure review and the What's in the Box were actually our top tens of uh, in our respective fields. Him, uh, Jack's Pop Guy, being Funko Pop related, makes no sense. And me, with the figures, I really uh, like how many views that got. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you liked my picks. And if there was a figure, uh, like, of, of course, I'm kind of a lower end collector. I don't collect, like, hot toys or anything, because, like, if I did, there would be hot toys probably on that list, but I don't just because it is out of my range. Like, I, I don't collect those. They're kind of not within my range. Uh, but yeah, uh, you also get to see, what else do you get to see? Uh, also make sure to check us out on Instagram. As of course, uh, I did upload a few cool, uh, I got the third wave of the alien figures, which is really, really good. You'll be seeing reviews of those guys eventually. I may just review, review them all in just one video just to make it easier on myself so I don't have to do three different videos. Uh, God, what else? But yeah, just check us out on Instagram. We post a lot of cool stuff. Jack Pop Guy posts a lot of really cool Funko Pops, what he's getting. He's also into cards, of course, too. Uh, also, check my Instagram out. A lot of figures, as you normally see. Uh, I also did some of my favorite movies that I saw of 2020. Even though there wasn't a lot of movies within theaters, I, it was for me, it was really great just because it was time to catch up like on cult classics, stuff that I never really got to see. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and I think that's... Oh, and also check us out on my, our Makari shops. I posted a lot of cool, uh, newer... A lot of Godzilla stuff. And I think a lot of, uh, Black Series... Uh, maybe a few Black Series? I can't remember. But I do have some other stuff coming up. I'm actually going to be posting a few Funkos that I'm going to be getting rid of. Uh, I don't know when those will be posted, but they're some cool ones, I think. I personally think they're cool. Uh, maybe not to you. But, you know, maybe recommend it to somebody who does. Uh, okay. So, with that out of the way, I think I'm done gabbing it on. Uh, I hope you guys had a wonderful 2021. Uh, hopefully it goes great uh, the west rest of your week. Hopefully you guys uh, will be, hopefully be safe. And uh, with that being said, I hope, you, uh, well, I've been saying that. So, without any further ado, you guys have a great day. Peace.